Hi, everyone. Thank you guys so much for coming tonight for our Travel Nursing with Families event. Our host is Kelsey Parrott, and we're so excited for you guys to join us. I'm Britt. I'm the community manager at Trusted. Um, and for those of you guys who don't know, Trusted places travel nurses in all 50 states. So if you're looking for an assignment, we got you. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. So just for your, so you're aware, um, the features in, in our Bevy platform, um, on your right hand side, there's a chat feature. So if you do, guys just want to say, hey, or, you know, get to know any of your fellow attendees, you can do that there. And then there's also a Q&A section and you can upvote questions that, you know, if anyone asks, wants to ask a question, you can upvote it and I'll float them to Kelsey throughout the presentation. We will have two question and answer sessions, so don't feel like we're going to wait till the end to answer them, okay? Um, we just so much enjoy you guys coming, so listen, learn, and connect with your fellow nurses. And then also, let's get ready to travel with our families. All right, so the agenda tonight is um, introduction. I'll introduce Kelsey, our great host. Um, then she'll talk about getting around, getting started, and then we also are going to go through some survey answers and then getting excited. And then, of course, like I said, we'll have some Q&A sections for everyone. All right, so this is Kelsey. Hey, can you hear me? Ready to roll. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Kelsey, and this is my husband, Derek. Hello, hello. <laughs> we live the travel nurse family life, and we currently call San Diego home. Yes, it's uh, quite beautiful, and I'm not planning on leaving. I just actually got back from the pool, so um, <laughs> do your thing, babe. Thanks. <laughs> We're from the Kansas City area. We wanted to take our children and explore our great country. We had no idea all the benefits that would come with travel nursing. My husband took an early retirement from the police department to begin um, the stay-at-home dad life. He didn't know he would be taking care of me, too, and it works out well for us. He chauffeurs me to work and delivers a dinner plate to me at the end of my shifts. How blessed am I? We have two boys, ages 11 and 8, who you'll meet in a bit. We also have a scruffy pup named Drew. He will probably be joining to us as he's usually glued to my side. Uh, we decided on a homeschool curriculum. We sold our home and took off on our first adventure in the fall of 2019. We never expected to leave our flyover state in the middle of the country and call so many places home. We consider ourselves very blessed, but it hasn't always been an easy trip. We have an RV that we pull across the country and we definitely have made our way around. Our RV is a 36-foot travel trailer named Birdie. It's a bunkhouse model, meaning it has a bedroom in the back with upper bunk beds, giving our kids a space of their own. We bought a previously owned camper and painted and remodeled it. It has a fully equipped kitchen and bathroom and plenty of places to snuggle up for a family movie night. We also spend a lot of time outside, as evidenced by our sun-kissed skin and my ever-growing collection of succulents and plants. We also have a collection of outdoor toys like bikes, scooters, and pool toys. My kids are blessed to swim in the RV park pool every day. The boys do their school lessons on the days I work so we can go on adventures on my days off. We have explored and visited so many places and learned so much on our field trips. We like to capture our memories by getting souvenirs in the form of t-shirts. Recently, while visiting an underground garden, a lady in our tour group mentioned, you look like you get around. Upon further inquiry, we discovered we were each wearing a shirt from a different state. Our top 10 favorite adventures so far include watching whale watching in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, the aquarium in Houston, Texas, riding the roller coasters in Hershey Park in Pennsylvania, climbing the Duns River Falls in Jamaica, taking a private van tour of all the sites in DC, Kayaking the channels of the bay on Long Island, New York. Hiking in Yosemite National Park. Riding the Staten Island Ferry to see the Statue of Liberty. Watching a sunset in the Grand Canyon. And visiting beautiful beaches everywhere. We are able to build lessons into every activity we do because with homeschooling, we have the flexibility to teach our kids what we want and how we want. We also really enjoy visiting science and history locations. So a field trip for us counts as hours towards their school records. And we believe our kids learn far more from getting to experience things rather than just reading about them in school. 
When we visited the Gettysburg National Park, we were able to take a guided tour bus around the battlefields and see the views and vantage points from the battles. We saw a 360 degree cyclorama painted on the wall that depicted the battle scenes. We also visited the museum and saw the weapons, flags, uniforms, and many other artifacts. Those are things that can't be taught from a textbook. Many people often inquire about kids getting to socialize while they're homeschooled. My kids make friends wherever they go, and there are always kids at all the RV parks. Before COVID, we also found local activities and sports to participate in, and they made friends at their swim club. They keep in touch with most of their friends through their video games. One piece of advice I received before I started traveling is you will love your work a lot less, but you will love your family a lot more. I wholeheartedly believe this to be true. By traveling, we've been able to minimize our possessions and focus on what's most important. We have grown together as a family and we live each day to the fullest without focusing on the material things in life. So, what adventure will we go on this week? Next slide, please, Britt. And again, let's meet Daniel. <laughs> this is Daniel. He's my 11 year old. Yes. I love getting to see new things in new places. While in Houston, we went to the Johnson Space Center for NASA. We got to ride a trolley to see the control room and hear the audio from the moon mission. 1969. We saw so many cool rockets and did a lot of fun activities. The coolest was the Apollo 5. I was so excited after that visit. I now want to go to space and maybe work for SpaceX. Good job. Thank you. And next we'll meet Destry. Oh, who's eating the snack? <laughs> <laughs> you want to just wave hi? Destry's my bashful one, so he says that he loves going on adventures. They're really cool, but sometimes exhausting. The hike, this hike that we did to the Upper Yosemite Falls was very hard, but it was extremely worth it. You want to say anything else? Just want to say bye? Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, so nurses travel for many reasons. So the first step to travel is to identify your reasons to travel. Maybe you seek financial freedom, so high paying contracts are a priority for you. Do you desire to explore new terrains, food and cultures? Then location will be your highest priority. Perhaps you want to be able to stay close enough to home to sleep in your own bed at night. So working a local travel contract is more for you. Maybe you don't want to uproot your family, but you still want the other benefits of traveling. Some nurses find jobs within two to six hours of home. They find housing and request block scheduling so they can travel home often. This is also the perfect opportunity to try out a summer assignment. While the kids are on a summer break, why not go on a long vacation to a new place? These are all options for nurses looking at traveling. Not everyone has to get around the whole country to take advantage of the perks of travel nursing. So, why do you want to travel? Thank you, ma'am. One more slide. So, um, we surveyed all the participants of today's presentation and these were the results we found. These numbers only represent those of you here with us today and not the majority of nurses interested in traveling. So, I hope to help every one of you with your travels today. 84% of Fam of families want to travel with their kids. 36% need some help with childcare options. 28% are single parents. So hopefully some of our childcare tips will help out. 16% uh, are looking for income opportunities while traveling. And our participants in today's event come from 20 different nursing specialties. So let's work on your plan. We're going to breeze through several topics that are important to consider. It's just a quick breeze because each one could be an hour long presentation by itself. I encourage you to take notes and further research any that apply to you and your family situation. There is no way we can cover every specific detail, but there are so many resources out there that I will direct you to, to help you gather more information to make an informed decision. There will be time for a Q&A at the end, and they're monitoring the chat feed, so feel free to ask any questions that you may have. 
So let me tell you about Trusted for just a sec. Trusted is different from other travel agencies because they don't use recruiters. Instead, you upload all your documents and information onto the Trusted platform. You search for jobs based on your preferences, like location, shift, or specialty, and you see all the details on the jobs available, like the location, pay package breakdown, and any special info the hospital may include. You can submit to jobs yourself without having to wait for a recruiter to send you a pay package or submit your file. You utilize a nurse advocate to help you with the process. My nurse advocate from the beginning of my travel career and now good friend Kelly has this to say about applying for travel nurse jobs. I would say as a formal travel, former travel nurse and trusted nurse advocate, my biggest piece of advice is to be open. On the same page, you have to know what your priorities and what means the most for you and shoot for that. Are you looking for location, money, facility, experiences? Picking what matters most will help drive your experience and allow you to be open in the other areas that are not a top priority. Now, let's talk about school, childcare, and activities. If your kids are school age, most families wonder how they might be able to give their kids an education while traveling. With many schools still offering virtual learning, this may be an option if your kids are already enrolled and doing well with their current schooling from home. Many families choose to homeschool their children as well. If this is something you're considering, I would encourage you to look into your state's homeschool laws because they can vary greatly. Once you identify what your requirements are, you can evaluate curriculums. There are over 100 homeschool curriculum types out there, so it's completely possible to find a curriculum that works for your kids and you. These types include online, textbook, and family style, with options for independent, student-led, or parent-led teaching. Some states require different types of attendance or record keeping, which can vary greatly in your options. More strict states can require homeschool curriculums to be under an umbrella or charter school, meaning parents can't choose any certain curriculum and instead must use a board certified school of the state's choice. Some states require competence testing similar to state testing that's done in public schools. Some states require only keeping record of the number of days or hours that kids attend school with no other restrictions or regulations in place. Homeschool requirements can vary for high school level students and those seeking college admission. Some states also provide funding for homeschool supplies. Please visit your state's education website. You will follow the regulations for your state of residence, not where you travel to. I couldn't even imagine trying to follow laws for four different states for each assignment. The following resources will be helpful in your search. KathyDuffyReviews.com and the Facebook group hip homeschool moms community. You can find many other local homeschool parents groups as well. Oh, so this was from Mr. Daniel. He said, I like how flexible our school schedule is. We get to learn whatever days and times we want. We also get to take a lot of field trips. My favorite was to Hershey, Pennsylvania. We took a trolley tour and learned about the city of Hershey, the company, and the man that started it all, Milton Hershey. We went during Halloween, so we got to eat a lot of fresh chocolate as well. We rode all the roller coasters at Hershey Park. I'm thankful my field trips to so many cool places. Next up is child care. So finding child care can be a challenge for families. When you move around the country, you leave behind knowledge of help, which may include family members or friends. For some, that just means getting creative for date nights. Other families may have both parents working or may consist of a single parent. These families have to put a bit more work to ensure their children have child care when needed. One option may include utilizing an in-home nanny or au pair. This could be someone you know that travels with you, like a neighbor's college student or a retired grandparent. Some families share child care with another family. Daycares may offer drop-in services. Staff nurses may have college or high school age children that are available for babysitting. Some websites that may be helpful to find child care include care.com, sittercity.com, and childcare.gov. You also may find local parents groups before you arrive at your new city where parents may be able to direct you to resources for child care or have references for babysitters.
Many kids still want to participate in sports or activities. It may take some planning ahead, but most cities have recreational leagues or private gyms where some kids may get to participate for a season. You may also find music, swimming, or other sports lessons for kids. Most cities tend to have a YMCA and some of them offer childcare too. Some school districts allow homeschool kids to participate in after school activities as well, like clubs and sports. Your kids can still be involved in scouts, chess club, or a swim team. Many libraries offer programs for kids to participate in. They often will provide library cards to traveling families as well as resources for other activities for kids. Finding local parent groups through social media can also be helpful in finding activities or other adventures. So, do we have any questions so far from the crowd? No. No? Because <laughs> we're doing guys, so well. Don't forget to ask any questions in the Q&A if you guys are late, um, just so you know, so Kelsey can kind of frame what she needs to um, tell you guys, okay? I hope you're taking notes. Okay. All right, so if you're traveling with a partner, will they also work? Take care of your kids or your pets. Will they take care of you too? This is from Derek, my stay at home nomad dad. He says, I'm very thankful for my wife and the opportunities that travel nursing has provided for our family. I was able to leave my toxic job and now I get to spend time learning and exploring with my boys. Travel nursing is not for everyone because there are challenges to overcome, but leaving behind a job and a sticks and bricks home to see the world is a very fulfilling lifestyle. So many significant others are stay at home parents of children or pets. This title also includes homeschool teacher, chef, taxi driver, grocery getter, laundry, washer, dryer, and folder. And some families, partners have jobs as well. Some spouses may have work from home remote jobs that allow them to travel anywhere. Sometimes both partners are traveling healthcare professionals. That takes some scheduled balancing. Um, in these cases, it can also be more challenging to find positions in the same city at the same time. Other factors may be important to these partners like having the same schedule or working the same shift or working opposite shifts if they plan to share childcare. Some spouses may need to find temporary jobs. These may include Uber or DoorDash or similar companies. There are also seasonal jobs that they may be able to find, such as warehouse work at Amazon or other retail companies. Some spouses may find work camper jobs as well, where they work at an RV or apartment site in exchange for pay or free rent. So finding safe and affordable housing is reportedly one of the biggest struggles for families. So let's explore it a little. Some agencies provide housing and some travelers prefer to use this. They pay all the deposits and fees and furnish it for you if it isn't. But that means you sacrifice your housing stipend and oftentimes you can find your own housing for much less than your stipend. Many families go the RV route, but it's certainly not the only option. The benefits of traveling in an RV include sleeping in your own bed and having your own space to call your own. Moving in an RV is easier than furnished housing because packing up is so much easier. Some drawbacks though may include not having a vehicle to safely pull your camper or having the experience or confidence to do so. Others include difficulty in finding a space to park at times. Here's a pro tip. If you're interested in buying a camper, buy used. They do depreciate quickly. And remember, every time you move, it's like an earthquake went through your home. Secure your belongings and be prepared for a broken glass or two. Like the souvenir beer mugs from an I Love America barbecue fest. RVs also require some maintenance and things are likely to break. Do some research on maintaining an RV to learn other tips and tricks. Here's another one, leave your black tank closed. You don't want the dreaded poop pyramid. Some good Facebook groups to join are full-time RV living and RV tips. Trusted also 
had a special event on RV living while traveling recently, so be sure to check it out for more info. Other housing options include renting furnished housing. This is more desirable to some because units are equipped with all the linens and kitchen supplies you need, so you only have to pack the essentials. Just be careful not to buy too many souvenirs. You will quickly accumulate items you don't have room to pack. Whichever type of housing interests you, I would encourage you to research your housing options before submitting for a job. Sometimes you may be, you may get, sometimes you may get the job offer, but you may be unable to find anywhere to live that will fit your family, be in a safe space, and be within your budget. Furnish finders and Airbnb are good sources to find monthly rates on rentals. Next week's trusted event is all about housing. What perfect timing. So when you move to your new home for 13 weeks, I would encourage you to arrive a few days early. This will allow you to get settled and to start to establish your new routine. Go back one, silly. Thank you. That's it. Um, I like to find a place to buy groceries and to do the laundry. If you're the religious type, you can spend your first Sunday trying a new church before you report to work on Monday. You can also drive to your next hospital to get a feel for the drive and parking. I also like to plug in the commute to my navigation for the time that I will be driving. It may only take 11 minutes on a Sunday afternoon, but you don't want to be late your first day because you didn't know that the commute time doubles. These are just a couple tips for making the start of your assignment in a new place a little smoother and to save more time for adventure. Mr. Destry says, I'm really glad to have my brother. He helps me with a lot of stuff. He is my best friend. I like exploring new places with him. I especially loved our visit to the Grand Canyon. It was a little scary at first because the canyon was so deep, but it was a very fun experience. The overlook was very peaceful. We could hear the river flowing and watch the sunset over the ridge. So it is easy to take for granted all the awesome things that are near where you live. Think about the things in your city or nearby area that you have never seen. When we get to travel, we make it a goal to go on one new adventure every week. Sometimes it's a day trip for a hike with some awesome views. Sometimes we go to a science or history museum, bonus points that they count for school hours. And I like to ask my coworkers at my new assignment for all the recommendations. They can tell you who has the best seafood, which museums are must see, and how to navigate the public transport systems. You can always find those local parent groups or find the Visit Our City web pages for recs as well. So I spoke with several other travel nurse families to get their biggest pieces of advice for families looking to travel. And this is the information we came up with for you. Don't wait until your kids are grown if you wanna be a travel nurse. Our kids are gaining so much knowledge and insight into the real world by getting to see and do things most people are never able to do in their lifetime. I also believe that traveling has allowed my family to downsize and focus less on the material things. This allows so much more time for us to grow closer and build strong relationships with one another. So just go for it and see if you like it. You won't know you like it until you try. And if it doesn't work out, you can always go back home or maybe you find your new home base. So now we can open it up for questions. All right, so the first one is from Caitlin, and it's, do you have someone come to your RV and hang out for the day or night to watch your kiddos? That would be an option. We, um, we since my husband stays home, we usually only use childcare like for a date night. So usually we meet somebody like at the RV park that we get more comfortable with, and then they either play outside while they're being watched, but that would be an option if you're utilizing um, someone you don't know as well, like through care.com, that they would come to your RV or to set where you're living to watch your kids. And from Marlita, how do you manage health insurance for your family? Okay. Uh, that's like one of the great big questions. <laughs> My family has opted not to use health insurance. We use a health care sharing plan instead. 
So it really would only help us with emergencies. We pay out of pocket for healthcare expenses that we have, like just general office visits and dental visits. And then we would like have assistance for anything, like any emergency. Um, but there are lots of people that just um, either use the health insurance provided by their agency um, or they find health insurance on their own so that they don't have to worry about switching health insurance whenever they switch agencies. And just to remind everyone, we do have a um, travel nurse insurance um, event coming up in July. Um, so stay tuned for that and definitely um, RSVP for that one as well. Um, there are no other questions at the moment. Um, okay. Did you want to add anything else? <laughs> You're so great. <laughs> oh, wait, we have one. Okay. Do you have a home base? Not like we a do. tax home home base, but did you downsize your life before RVing? Great question, um, So our home base, uh, we pay rent. Like there are um, tax laws that uh, should be abided by. Sometimes you'll get information out there where people say they don't follow the rules, but that's not a chance that I would be willing to take. I certainly don't want to get charged with, I don't want to get audited, charged with tax fraud and tax evasion and have to owe tens of thousands of dollars in taxes like other nurses have had to. So we do maintain a tax home. Um, we pay rent to my mom who has to claim it as income on her taxes. Um, we owned a home that we did sell recently. So that was our tax home before as well. So our belongings are back home in our hometown in a storage unit and we pay to rent and then following the tax laws are really important. So visiting traveltax.com is a good place to go. And did it trust it have an event recently about taxes too? Um, if you guys go to our site, we'll link it uh, below so you guys can check out that as well, the recording for that. Um, and then we have another question from Casey. What are some of the hardest parts about traveling with your family? Mm, there are hard parts. We we do miss not, we miss our village of people that we had nearby all the time. Um, like occasionally my kids will say like, I miss this friend or I would really like to go see this friend. Um, so we try to connect in other ways. We video chat way more often than we used to. Um, we're flying home next month in a few, yeah, for like a week, we're going to fly home. Uh, and we're trying to fit in visits with everyone into a week. So that's one of the drawbacks. Um, and then like things always are going to happen. Like we had to put our truck into the shop before moving day, uh, before we came to this assignment. So like, there are always things that are going to happen. You don't always have someone nearby, but I think that the upside to it is that you learn how to figure things out together instead of like relying on other people. It like makes you closer because you're just like a little team figuring it out. Except I'm sorry for the things I said while we were trying to park the camper. you guys have any plans to um, uh, settle down or stop traveling or you just want to keep going? San Diego is so gorgeous. It's very desirable. <laughs> this isn't even my favorite hospital assignment I've been to, but I really love the city. It's like just the perfect weather. So we have considered it, but maybe we're not done traveling yet. There's still a lot of the country we haven't seen yet. I think we should keep at it for a while. <laughs> I think so too. I think it's amazing. Uh, which assignment as a nurse have you enjoyed the most? And have you ever received an assignment that you did not enjoy and have to leave? Juicy. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, my favorite assignment was in Madera, California at Valley Children's. It was, um, I feel like the most the best well-ran hospital that I worked at and I loved the unit I was on in the PICU and then even when I floated to any other unit into the NICU or the pediatric floors like they were so helpful they had so many resources available and they I really felt like we were appreciated and valued as travelers like that most definitely has been my favorite assignment um I've never left an assignment early because I feel like you can stick out anything for 13 weeks. It's only three months that you have to 
get through an assignment. So I personally haven't had any situations where I felt like I needed to leave. Um, I've had assignments I didn't like as much. And again, I just love my life more than my job. So we just find um, ways to explore the area that we're in and make the best of it. That. <laughs> All right, guys, are there any more questions? Have you always been able to find RV parks near your assignment? Um, so that is one of the things that I feel like is important to look for before I submit for a job because um, I've never, I do my research beforehand. I'm sorry, my dog is talking to a dog out the window. <laughs> Um, I find that there's somewhere I can park before I submit for a job or I don't submit for it. There are some places that are harder to find jobs, like near the D.C. area, there are very few parks and they're very expensive. So I made sure there was somewhere we could go before I submitted for a job because I just feel like that would waste everybody's time. My time, my nurse advocate's time and the interviewer if I took a job, but then like I couldn't find somewhere to park my RV. So um, finding housing I, before submitting for a job, I think is really important. Um, yeah, sometimes it gets a little, you have to get a little creative. Like we've had to move halfway through an assignment before, but yeah, I always make sure I have something lined up first. Um, how do you, how did you settle on your truck and trailer setup? And do you have another vehicle? Um, I have a car but we decided to leave it at home the last time we were home because we like each other a lot and we wanted to travel across the country together in one vehicle instead of being in two separate ones. Um, so I left my car at home so we all could ride together in the truck and my husband and I enjoy 10 minutes of peace in the morning on the way to work and then back on our way home. Um, that's like our little, our like date time whenever he takes me to work in the mornings. Um, so we actually rented an RV before we bought one because we wanted to try out the floor plan and make sure that it met our needs. And do we have somewhere to store these 500 school books that we have? And, uh, do we like the way the kitchen is set up? So we rented one at our very first assignment to see what we thought. And we found out what we liked and didn't like. And then for buying an RV, we found, thought it was really important to try a bunch of floor plans out. So we went to many different um, stores where they sell RVs, um, sat in a bunch of RVs, spent a lot of time in them. And we decided that we wanted to buy a used one because they depreciate so quickly if you decide like, travel nursing isn't for you and you like want to sell your RV within the next two years, if you buy a brand new one, you're going to like lose money. Like you're going to be upside down on a loan. And since we sold our home, we had some cash and we wanted to pay cash for hours. So, um, we picked a travel trailer over like, uh, the drivable kind of RV, like a class A because we felt like they had more storage space. Um, we were able to customize ours a lot. As you can see, the wall behind me is gray and the cabinet above my head is white and they are not the dreary brown colors that they were whenever we bought it. <laughs> we painted it and really made it feel like home. And I just love that we were able to do that. Like this is our home. Like we do live here. This is the home that we enjoy being in. So I put my own curtains up and took down the ugly ones. I hung up pictures everywhere that my husband can complain about sometimes, but <laughs> we just wanted to find a camper that we could make ours. And this one really works for us. And then as far as the truck goes, um, we ended up upgrading our truck to a bigger one, uh, because I think that it's important to have a truck that's large enough to safely tow and stop a camper. Um, I think one common thing that we see a lot and now it's just kind of like a running joke for my husband and I is that people will buy campers that their truck may not be able to safely tow. Um, so if anyone is out there interested in knowing what their truck is capable of 
towing, you have your towing capacity um, that gives you like the total gross amount of weight that you can haul. And you should find a camper that is 75 to 80% of that weight, not the total weight, because you may be able to haul it, but you may not be able to stop it safely out there whenever you're driving 60 miles an hour. Um, and also lots of the accidents that happen are from people that are using trucks that are too small to haul the size camper that they have. So I think it's better to go big or go home. So we have a great big girl, with a big old wide end. <laughs> the, it's called a, du a dually, a uh, big diesel engine. So it feels safer riding in a bigger truck like that. And girls can drive those trucks too. Um, another question is, what do you do about doctor or dentist visits and checkups? Do you go home and find doctors or find doctors in your area? So for dental visits, since we like to go every six months, we just find one wherever we are. So the first time that we did it was during COVID. Um, and this dentist office like really wanted customers. So they were offering like this $99 special, like get your whole exam cleaning and x-rays for $99. So the four of us were able to get it all done for 400 bucks. It's like cheaper than what you'd spend on dental insurance for the whole year. Um, and then for um, office visits with our primary care, we visit, we go whenever we go home. Luckily, we're in a small town, so we don't have the issue of like, our next available appointment is 14 months away. So we <laughs> still see our primary care from back home because we can get in pretty quickly. Awesome. How is training and orientation at facilities? It is variable. Um, I've had one day of orientation and then kind of thrown to the wolves. And then I've also been places that have provided um, like two to three days of orientation before, excuse me, before even getting onto the floor and then getting three to four days of orientation on the floor. So. It can be variable, but I'm always just prepared to do whatever. Everyone knows, just make sure that, um, you know, you are talking to your team when you do travel, um, because they can also provide you with a little bit more information as well. Um, reaching out to your nurse advocates and your um, care coordinators, um, just to make sure you feel safe with whatever training that you did get. Um, I uh, myself was a travel nurse as well, so um, it, Kelsey's totally right. It does vary. Um, mm -hmm. But just make sure that you're safe um, and that you feel comfortable. Um, so just don't forget about that. There Another are question. loads oh, of Facebook groups out there too. Like mm -hmm. Travel Nursing Newbies is a good one. Um, and then I am and in a couple different ones for like PICU specific nursing, but there are tons of them out there for every type of specialty. In our PICU one, we can just like, you know, talk about the facilities and say, someone's like, what do you think about this hospital? And everyone can say, oh, I loved it or don't apply there. Like you could, you can get the scoop from a lot of social media sites. Ask, that's what we always say yep. is no yep. question is a dumb question. We all have asked it before. So <laughs> good advice. Um, how, why did you choose RV over provided housing and furnished finders? Okay. Provided housing or furnished finders? Both? Both. Okay. Or anything. So, okay. So we opted not to use provided housing because the housing stipend is so much more than what the housing costs are. So I feel like that's where you can make a lot of your money is by taking your stipend. And a great goal is to keep your housing costs to what one week's amount of housing what your stipend is. If your stipend is $1,500, then you try to keep your housing costs less than that. So we opted for the RV instead of living somewhere furnished because I said that we rented an RV to start with. Um, that's the one we had to move halfway through our assignment because it was only available for part of the finished condo. And just from those two, alone, we decided we do this. It, took like a whole week to pack up all of our whole life and another week for me to put it all away where it all has its own home, including all those 500 school books and clothes and all the things that we had. And for me, I said that was way too stressful. I just wanted an RV so I could just, it takes us an hour to tear our RV down. 
uh, taking down the pictures that aren't secured on the wall and putting padding in so that I don't lose any more of my precious bar glasses and um, in moving things around, bringing all of my succulents inside to be transported. It takes us an hour to disconnect everything, pull our slides in, hook up and go. So it's a lot easier for us. We can even like pack up, you know, and go on a weekend trip and stay somewhere in an RV and then just bring our RV back here. So we like that we have our home and we have our bed and we have our decorations. Those things that make you feel like you're at home and they make you miss your own village a little less. Yeah, I feel that. <laughs> um, do you have block scheduling on your assignment? No, I don't. My schedule, uh, I'm not particular about my schedule. Usually the one I'm at right now, I mentioned is not really my favorite and scheduling is why. Um, where I am right now, we actually have no say in our schedule at all. It's a rotating schedule, so you can work days or nights, and we don't really get a say in when we work at all. But the city is really beautiful. Um, but I have worked some assignments where you can self-schedule and you make your own schedule. You might get moved around a little bit sometimes, or you can make preferences and say like, hey, I'd rather work block schedules. So it's all about preferences. If you're interested in block scheduling, though, bring it up in your interview, um, bringing it up in your interview and then asking to get it put in your contract is really the only way you could be guaranteed it. So if you are like wanting to leave your fam at home and travel somewhere, but aim for block scheduling, then getting it in your contract is really the best way to get it. Just know that uh, you have fewer job options because sometimes hospitals refuse to do block scheduling. Just like we were talking about before, it varies between hospitals. <laughs> um, do you suggest getting insured while doing a travel assignment? Uh, I don't personally. I think it depends on each individual person. We are a relatively healthy family. We really only go to the doctor for regular visits, so we use the healthcare sharing plan. Um, but some people like the safety of having health insurance. And if that's the case, then you get what you feel comfortable having. Personal preference is what we will err on the side of Very, that. very much so. <laughs> um, is there a way you find good RV parks? And what do you look for in an RV park? Um, and then also, do you have a washer and dryer in your RV? Or do you okay. use a laundromat? Okay. Um, so it really depends. When we were in DC, there are like three RV parks that we could possibly go to and only one was available. So we only had options to go to one and we make the best of it. We ended up being like right on the bay where we got to go fishing all the time. It was brackish water, which we learned in as a school lesson, brackish water is where like salt water mixes with fresh water and you have like a huge variety of fish there. Um, and but if like, I really had preference, you know, I'm gonna pick somewhere with the pool because my kids are in it every day and that's a good form of exercise. Um, but lots of Facebook groups out there, um, several of them for like full-time RVing or there's one called Where Do You Stay RV and you people like go in there and leave reviews or they say like, I'm going to San Diego, where should I go to be safe? Um, so that's part of like doing some of the research before you travel. I find somewhere to stay and find somewhere that's got good reviews. Usually on one of those groups, I'm able to find good reviews or just using Google Maps and finding them and you can read through the reviews there. Um, and the good thing about being in an RV is if you don't like your site, you can find a new park to go to and go there. And it's not as difficult as like packing up your whole life if you don't like your upstairs neighbor. Um, then laundry, we chose not to have in-unit laundry because um, they usually can wash the equivalent of like two sets of scrubs. And I have a family of four and we already do laundry like three times a week. So laundry is actually my husband's away time that he prefers to do the laundry to get a little break from life. So he will go to laundry three days a week uh, and we have some good bags that we use to like store our laundry in and then to haul it to the laundromat 
most RV parks have laundromats available. Sometimes they're not great. And so then we go find laundromats in the store in the in town instead. But where we are right now has a really nice laundromat. So we use laundromat services and then, um, yeah, haul it back. And that's a chore for kids to do. <laughs> a life skill, which also counts as school hours. <laughs> Right. Um, and then um, so a couple of people are asking about uh, liability coverage. Okay. That, like, all nurses have to make their own decision about whether or not they want to carry their own nursing liability insurance. Some people like the safety of it. Some people will tell you that if you have it and you're involved in a lawsuit, that they're going to be going after you for money, too. So. I personally don't carry it, but it is a personal liability, a personal choice. I would just um, let everyone know um, for any tax questions, definitely get a tax professional and any law questions, definitely get a lawyer. Um, those are the best people to ask for those questions um, <laughs> just to make sure that you are doing what's best for you and your life because um, everyone is different and um, every everyone's situation is different. Um, so we want to make sure that we provide you all with the best direction that we can. Um, so we air to <laughs> push you to those people, okay? Um, but yeah, I think those are all the questions. Awesome. So thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. We appreciate you all. Um, and we will be linking uh, the recording of this video in our um, wrap up email. So you'll all get another copy. If um, any of you were having trouble getting on, you will get an email. Um, so thank you all again for joining. And thank you so much, Kelsey, for hosting. We appreciate you. you. Utilize those social media outlets. There are so many of them. Go to the modern nurse, the trusted one, and ask all the questions that you have. Yes, and we also have a blog as well. Um, I can link some of the blog articles as well for some of the questions that you are asking in the wrap-up email as well. So thank you guys again. Bye. Bye.